I don't know, man. It's just, it's just not, not really clear what's going on. Anyway, that's done. So back to the game. We're gonna recruit assassins and maybe run around the city a bit. I haven't been to Constantin well, Istanbul these days. I've, I haven't been to Istanbul in real life. So unfortunately, wait a minute, did I get that right? So unfortunately, I, I won't be able to discuss the city in as much detail as, you know, Rome and Florence and all that, and Venice. Hopefully that's okay. Maybe I should, maybe I should go. Maybe I should just, you know, take a trip to Istanbul before I finish the game. <laughs> That'd be nice. I think I think the the usual things will apply. Like most of the buildings will be too small, well not too small, but much smaller than they are in real life, and probably the city itself is much smaller than it is in real life as well. Uh, the quest is that way. What if we look at the map? Are there any interesting things in the map? There's a few interesting things in the map. What is this? Doctor... Oh, he's the bomb maker. And then we can, like, unlock the bookshops and banks and whatnot. Curious. I'm not sure how that works. I think we can start investing in the shops the same way we did back in Rome in the last game. Let's go to the bookstore and see if we can buy anything. Uh, the bookstore appears to be... Oh, there's a box there. The bookstore appears to be on the other side of this wall. I think there are two types of loot boxes. There's like big loot and small loot. And the small loot will respawn, whereas the big loot is only one at a time. The small loot is only bomb making materials. The big loot is also money, I think. Renovate the bookstore for 800... I don't even know what money we're using. What's this symbol? Um, treasure maps and rare books. Alright. Constant Nopal's income has increased. That's great. Why is my notoriety so high as well? Uh, treasure maps. There's a lot we can... Wow, really? We can buy all of them straight away. Alright, well... Don't really have enough money for that right now. We can buy rare books, which also increases the value of our headquarters. Let's leave that for now. Because we want to conserve money, at least for now. We can bribe that guy to lower our notoriety. Let's get the doctor. Doctors. So what do they sell? Healing potions. Oh! Restoring shops also increases your notoriety. That's interesting. Supplies and ingredients. Saltpeter and skunk oil. Fast acting poison upgrade. Um, not sure what that means. All right. Well, let's let's not do this right now then, because there's still game mechanics that we have not yet unlocked. Uh, once the awareness is high enough, they may attack one of your dens. Oh, that's interesting. So if you really want to play the uh, the Templar Tower defense, then you should increase your notoriety. But if you don't want to play that game, then you just don't don't do it. Don't increase your notoriety, and you can avoid that completely. Apparently, the lighting is kind of nice. The way the light kind of comes straight down. Like different parts of the world have different lighting conditions because the sun is at a different angle in the sky too. So when you go to a different part of the world, like even the light looks different. So that's amazing, right? And also, of course, you know the atmospheric conditions, whether there's humidity in the air and stuff like that. That's also different. 
Like some places have no clouds. Which, I mean, if you come from a place with a lot of clouds, that might be weird to you. And other places, you know, just just have, uh, have a lot of clouds. Or the clouds are different shapes. It's always interesting to go around different places in the world just to look at clouds. <laughs> or maybe it's not interesting to you guys. Uh, what are you doing? Hi. Are you a compassionate man, Affinity? Can you help me? That I stole fruit from a vendor, I will not deny. But only because my hunger has trumped my honesty. Bring me the key to these chains, and I will repay you tenfold. So he just told us he has no money to buy fruit, but he's going to repay us tenfold somehow. Wait right here. Uh, obviously. <laughs> so we have to pickpocket the guard holding the key. Where is the guard? Pickpocket is is shift, right, when you're walking. Wow, how far away is this guard? Is he really all the way over? And we have to look for him. You would think the guard would be nearby, keeping watch on the prisoners, but no. Uh, why is there a beacon of light? Oh, that's, that's the boundary, isn't it? We can't go to the next district. Uh, these guys don't seem to... Oh. oh. Wait, what? No, what? Who said I want to fight you guys? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why? Why are you doing this? Why you do this, bros? I don't want to do that. Alright, somewhere around here... There's a guard with the key. Do I do I have to like is that him? Do I have to look at him for a while? Oh no, there he is. Okay, there he is. I found him. I found him, guys. Uh, so target located. All right, we got the key. We are running away. We are running the hell away from this situation. Okay, let's find a place to sit down or jump in a pile of hay or something. Hopefully. Where can I... I'm gonna blend somewhere. Hey guys, where can I... Oh, there's guards there. I bet. Where are these hiding spots? Oh, was it a hiding spot? Oh, too late. Uh, hey guys, never mind. I'm just uh, running away from your friends. Don't mind me. Oh, I'm done. Cool. All right, so we've lost the uh, lost the chasers. Oh, hey. You humble me, Fendim. I will return to the merchant I robbed and show him the same kindness. After you have cleared your conscience, amigo, consider joining our cause. To be an honest man, one needs honest work. I would be honored. Saul. Okay, I don't know where he found the money to repay the merchants, but okay. Nikolai Dragomir. Cool name, bro. Recruit assassins, save us citizens in danger, or convince them to join your ranks Recruit to recruit new assassins. Okay. I don't know if I should do that now or continue with the quest because apparently we still need to unlock some of these mechanics. Shift in high profile when you need some scaffolding to pull it down. You can also kill guards by throwing them. Wait, I can just pull down scaffolding? Cool. Let me just continue with the quest because I, th I think there are notoriety things that I need to learn about. I don't really want to bribe the heralds to reduce my notoriety because it costs too much money. If possible, I would rather rip down some posters. 
So let us continue with the quest. Yes. You can also just swim across or row your own boat. You don't have to take that boat every single time. Uh, chest. Oh, what was I saying before? I was saying before that, you know, it's interesting when cultures mix because the architecture also mixes. It's also interesting when, you know, one particular culture goes to a different part of the world. For example, back in the first game, you know, when the Europeans went over to Palestine and, you know, took the kingdom of Jerusalem from the, uh, from the Muslims. And they started building European style architecture over in, in the Middle East. You know, that's kind of interesting, right? My men have abandoned me for the dice. Uh, hi. Wait. They... Carry the shipments. Yeah, so that, that's kind of interesting when that happens. Because, you know, the architecture of a place, you know, it responds to the place. For example, if it rains a lot, or, or maybe like if it snows a lot, Usually the roofs become very steep because you don't want the snow accumulating on the roof because it's heavy, right? Like if your if your roof is flat and all the snow just kind of stays on the roof and eventually there's too much snow on top and the whole thing just collapses. So that's why, you know, in the Nordic countries, in Northern European countries, you see really steep roofs. Wait a minute, there's an assassin coming for me, really? Alright, he's running away. So in, in, in the... In Scandinavia, for example, like typically the roofs will be quite steep because it snows. Whereas, you know, in the Middle East, the roofs are usually just flat because it doesn't even rain. So you don't even need. Uh, no problem. What is he giving me? 500 bucks. Alright, cool. So, you know, in. in in the Middle East, you get flat roofs because it doesn't even rain. If it rains, you need a sloped roof to get the water to run off, right? You don't want water pooling on your rooftop. So, you know, whether the the roof is flat or steep depends on the weather, basically. It depends, it depends on the climate, whether it snows or whether it rains or whether it doesn't do neither. So when you have Europeans going to the Middle East and they build sloped roofs because that's what they've always done, it's kind of funny because it doesn't rain there, so why do you have sloped roofs? It's, it's kind of silly, right? So that's interesting, and the reverse also happens a little bit. For example, the Turks here, they've taken the city of Constantinople. Now, Constantinople is, is kind of it's more Europe. The, the climate, I guess, is still fairly... You know, it's kind of like halfway between the Middle East and the Europe. But as the Turks kind of moved further north, or they, I guess they didn't really go very much further north, but just, you know, the climate and the weather, it affects architecture, it affects, you know, arms and armor and clothing, and it affects a lot of things. It's kind of interesting when, you know, people move around and the stuff they used to do don't work anymore in the new environment. And that kind of reveals a lot of things about the architecture and then what they do and things like that. Does that make sense? Anyway, let's just go on, go on with the game. Oh, and for example, like when the European explorers tried to go to the Arctic or Antarctica, like they would wear wool clothing because that's what they have, like wool clothing. Whereas the smarter guys would, you know, copy the, the Inuit people and they would like have polar bear skins. <laughs> and they just ditch their wool, wool jackets and started wearing polar bear skins because it's more effective, like it keeps them warmer and allows them to, to survive. And uh, famously, I think, I don't know how famous, but... Shackleton, when he was racing Edmondson to the South Pole, I don't know if you recognize the names, but the British guys, like they bought ponies and and horses to the South Pole, whereas Edmondson, the Norwegian guy, bought dogs and had dog sleds. And obviously dogs, and hus like huskies especially, are, are better suited for the Arctic conditions than the ponies were. And so the ponies all died, and they ate the ponies. Whereas the dogs brought Edmondson to the South Pole before Shackleton got there. So stuff like that, you know, you have to kind of adapt to changing conditions. 
Uh, one of your assassins has gained enough experience to lead one of your assassin dens. Den leaders can progress to the rank of master assassin after performing unique missions with you. Once assigned as a den leader, that assassin will be linked permanently to that den, so choose wisely. Okay, so this guy is level 10 straight away. Amazing. Den leader selection. So when a guy is level 10, we can assign him as the leader. What does that mean though? What does it mean when he's a den leader? Oh look, there's a map of... Um, a schematic map of Constantinople and there's flags. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Cool. What's up? The Sentinel Part One. The uh, this apprentice is concerned about some suspicious activity in this district. He wants hear what he has to say. Use your assassin signal at least one at least one time. All right. Mentor, we have a problem. A great many assassins have disappeared in recent months, and I believe I know why. Disappeared? Do you mean they have been killed? I fear so, but there is no time to explain. Hide in the park west of here, and wait for me to arrive. You shall see for yourself. Reach the outskirts of the city park, keep an eye on your apprentice, alright. <laughs> 